Hi, thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to talk about a book I just finished. And the book is called Man A and the American Civil War. Now, this book is free. You can find it um, on the Metropolitan Museum of Art website. They published it in 2003. And if you search on the internet for the Metropolitan Museum of Art and Man A, and the American Civil War. So I put it on my iPad and I read it. It's a very short book. It has uh, several significance for me and that's why I decided to do this uh, video. I'm trying to explain why I got to this book because it's kind of a niche book. Sometimes I do classics and more notable books that most people have heard of. But in this case, it's it. I admit it's an obscure book, but I really think it's uh, very interesting and it fits into my own interests regarding Manet, Edouard Manet and painting and then at the end I'm going to make a connection to a personal experience I have related to the, this book. So as I said it's Manet and the American Civil War. They wrote the book because they acquired the painting. The Metropolitan Museum of Art acquired the painting of the USS Kearsarge. Here's the painting of the Kearsarge in Cherbourg Harbor. Here's the watercolor, the quick watercolor that Manet painted on site in Cherbourg, France. The Kearsarge was involved in a very significant Civil War battle when the Kearsarge sunk the Alabama in Cherbourg, France. And this story interested Edouard Manet. Now, uh, if you've seen my channel, you know that I went to the the exhibition of Manet and Degas, and that's where you saw this painting, and you saw a couple of other maritime paintings. And here's where I first saw the painting of the battle of the Cursarge versus the Alabama. I saw the painting in New York City, but it's owned by the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Also, on another video, I went to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and they had a couple of maritime paintings by Manet. So I want to explain this lesser-known part of Manet's career. Certainly, his other paintings are much more um, notable and famous. It's an interesting little part of him as an artist. And one of the things that happened with Edouard Manet was his father was a very successful judge in Paris. And, and as the young Manet matured, he showed an interest in art. His father was hoping for more of a traditional occupation for his young son. And he wanted to deter his son from choosing the path of an artist, which is risky because it's, um, it's so difficult to be successful as an artist. It's understandable that what his father did. So what his father did was he, he, um, he encouraged Manet to join the French Navy. And at that time, there was a test that young men had to take in order to be accepted into the Navy. So Manet's father convinced Edouard Manet to um, kind of join this boot camp, this French army boot camp and go on a voyage on a, on a vessel and then learn how the Navy works and prepare him for this test. Probably like most people felt a debt to his father and wanted to see if this was a possible career choice. So man, the young man A went on, a, uh, on this voyage. He learned how ships work and watched how officers work and watched how the crew works and he got a good, you know, understanding of how things work. He took the trip uh, and then he returned to France. He took the test. He didn't pass the test. And then he further went into uh, art and uh, became an apprentice to another painter. I think his name was uh, Couture. Late, around 1864, during the Civil War of the United States, against the Confederate States. Um, you would think all the battles were on the United States territory, but they weren't. And what happened was the Confederate States commissioned a ship called the Alabama, and its role was kind of to be a pirate ship 
and to roam around the oceans and to find merchant vessels that were headed toward the northern states and they were to just sink those merchant vessels. They were unarmored merchant vessels. It was an easy way to frustrate the, the Union Army. It was, a, um, it was kind of a sly way to fight. Uh, but the, they did it and they were very successful. The Alabama sunk many Union merchant ships. The Kearsarge was the USS and the Alabama was the Confederate CSS. So um, at this point in the Civil War, the um, Alabama was in France and it was in the port of Cherbourg and it was refitting itself for further um, pirate raids on other uh, ships. Well, the Kearsarge caught up with them and they were waiting outside in international waters. Now, France and England were both neutral in the Civil War, so they forbid any battles within their territorial waters. So the Kearsarge was waiting outside. Alabama knew it. The Alabama could only stay in port for so many hours. Then they had to leave. So when it came time to leave, they had to leave the French port and go out. Once they got to international waters, they engaged the Kearsarge. And here's a map uh, that the captain of the... Kearsarge drew of what the battle was and what happened was the Alabama came out and I believe they shot first and then the two ships went round in circles but as the map shows the circles move with the current so there's several circles of the, the ships going around and round and round and firing upon each other well finally the Alabama was hit and in Manet's painting, you can see it started to sink from the stern down. Now let's look at Manet's painting of the event. You see the Kearsarge in the back and then you see the Alabama with the stern going down and it's sinking. This smaller ship in the, in the foreground is going towards the Alabama. It's a British ship called the Deerhound and it was going out to get survivors. Now, the, this happened off the court of Cherbourg, and there, it was watched by many people. Now I want to move on to the next part of the story, and that is the media explosion that happened about this event. As I said, it was seen by the people on the shore of Cherbourg. This story was covered in Paris. It was covered in London by the London Illustrated News. It was covered by American papers. It was covered by the New York Herald. And so this story was, uh, you know, a media sensation for its time. And what happened was the coverage of the story extended all the way to California and some of the miners in the eastern Sierra Nevada mountains. Before I move on to that, I wanted to say an important thing about the difference in art between an illustration and a fine art painting made by Manet. Let's take one last look at Manet's painting and I hope you can see when you compare it to what you saw in those illustrations how superior a fine artist like Manet is when he captures the drama of this scene, the depth of the ocean, the urgency of the deer hound as it goes to the Alabama, as the, the shooting from the Kearsarge and the, the drama of the Alabama as the stern sinks into the English Channel. So that's an important part of the power of a painter like Manet. So here's my wonky amateur Google Earth map showing Schorberg down on France and then London's going to appear. So this story went to Paris, it went to London, it went to New York, it was traveling all around the globe. And as you see here, and ignore that black, the, uh, it traveled across the Atlantic all the way to California into what's called the Eastern Sierra Nevada Mountains. There's kind of a valley in there that we're going to focus in on. And there were some, in 1864, there were some miners there and ranchers, but they were very interested in this story and they were following it such that there's a place out here called the Alabama Hills. 
there's a place out here called Kursarge. So the next part of the story is where I'm going to talk about how these two places in this so far away got named after these Civil War battle. Now the Alabama Hills is an area of all these kind of unusual rock formations, big boulders coming out of the ground. Some of them have strange shapes and we're going to take a look at these, but um, you might recognize some of these kind of terrain because this is, was a popular area, still is today, for shooting movies, westerns and sci-fi films. So, But we're interested in the Civil War, so here's a little uh, ballad. The Alabama's gone hurrah, the Davy Jones's lock of far. There's nothing left of her to mar our commerce on the sea. The Alabama's gone hurrah, the Davy Jones's lock of far. There's nothing left of her to mar our commerce on the sea. The hero of chronometers was vanquished by the stripes and stars. He'll long remember Yankee tars on board the ship gear sars. The Alabama's gone hurrah to Davy Jones's locker far. There's nothing left of her to mar our commerce on the sea. But yet no Yankee shot replied Until our gallant captain cried Come lads, give them a round The Alabama's gone hurrah To Davy Jones's locker far There's nothing left of her to mar Our commerce on the sea Then came a sound that echoed far With cheer on cheer from Yankee tar Sinking ship and trembling spar, a scene of death soon told. Down to the bottom of the deep sank many a traitor foe to sleep, while Sims the hero, like a sheep, went to an English fold. The Alabama's gone hurrah to Davy Jones's locker far. There's nothing left of her to mar our commerce on the sea. The Alabama's gone hurrah to Davy Jones's locker far. There's nothing left of her to mar our commerce on the sea. The Alabama's gone hurrah to Davy Jones's locker far. There's nothing left of her to mar our commerce on the sea. So back to the map, you can see the Alabama Hills. It's about a 40 minute drive to Kursarge. We're going there next. So here I am by the Kursarge sign. So out here in the California in the late 1800s, some of these miners and the men who lived out here, some of them were for the Union and some of them were for the Confederate. So with the success of the, U, the CSS Alabama, the men there named Alabama Hills after the CSS Alabama. Now the rival miners here named this the Kursage after the Kursage which sunk the Alabama. So it's very interesting that these Two miners so far away from the Civil War battles were all the way out here in California following the news and um, had their rival camps and, their, and they, had, they were free to name things because no one was really out here very much just for miners and explorers and trappers and so they, uh, and so they, they named these, these two things. So I think that's very interesting that these two guys are out here. So I'm going to show you a little bit about here. Um, what we're looking at here. Now here is the uh, marker here and you notice some train tracks here. I'm going to show you a photograph in a second of what it looked like back in the 1800s. But this says that this was the Cursard station built originally as a stagecoach depot in 1866. It evolved into a railroad station in 1883 to carry freight and passengers on the Carson and Colorado Railroad line, known locally as the Slim Princess. 
It served the independence community from 1883 until it was closed during the Great Depression on June 29, 1932. The station was torn down in 1955 and the railroad line ceased operation on April 30, 1960. Alongside the station depot was a residence for section boss and bunkhouse for the workers, dedicated in 2010. Okay, here's the sign. Actually, the sign the sign is crooked, but if you look at the the horizon, my horizon's level. For I'm a decent videographer, but um, this sign is crooked, and if you look closely at it, you can see that it shows a map of Kursarge, and uh, this is 1945. You have the uh, I'm on the Mazuka Canyon Road right behind us is the road. And then you have, here is um, the main line of the uh, main line of the railroad is right here, which would be that over there. So on the other side would be the agent's house, the house, um, a tool house over there. On the right side would be a depot right here, right behind the sign. Uh, there would be a water tower over there, and that's what it, that would look like. And then if you look down below here, I'm going to try to get a better shot of this. Okay, so here I have my camera sideways. This is a photograph, and on the left you see, see the train here at the end. On the right you see the depot. So that's what the depot looks like here in Kursarge, California. Okay, hi. I was down there in uh, Kursage and I looked up the road a little bit and I saw this structure so I thought I'd come up and take a look at it. My guess is it's some kind of a mining um, structure. It's made out of wood and it's kind of a box shape and it has a spout, a chute to, I guess, put the dirt out. But they did mine silver around here. That is why they were in Kursage. And, um, so I thought I'd show this to you also. That wood looks in pretty good shape, so I'm not sure if that's from uh, 1864. I'll turn the camera back around to see, you can see Kursage. It's just down the road. Kursage is right down there, because that's where Kursage is. So that's the extended story of the Kursarge versus the Alabama. I've connected Manet's painting to the Civil War, to the miners in California, and to the Alabama Hills, and the small little abandoned town called Kursarge in California. Thanks for joining me in this video, and I hope to see you in another video. Thanks for watching.